Hi William here again and welcome to this week's project video. Now a new topic, a new uh, range of videos that I intend doing on upcycling. Now upcycling or repurposing, I'm not convinced I know the difference. Um, anyway basically both involve taking something old and turning it into something new or even something better. So in this series of videos I'm going to be taking uh, some old piece of timber which has already been used and turning it hopefully into something more interesting. So having a look around my uh, box of bits and pieces and my wood store I came across this uh, what I assume is part of a table leg. Um, I believe it may have come from a billiard table in the past. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure it's substantial enough because I know that billiard and snooker tables always have fat short legs, a bit like me. Um, so anyway, I have this. Um, I believe also it's made to look like mahogany. It's kind of been stained with one red stain on the outside, but in fact I think it's English walnut. So then, what could we do with this? So the first and obvious thing you see is some kind of a vase using the whole of the section of table leg. And the only issue with this is in fact that the flutes at the top would be open and I think I would need to add a false rim to make it aesthetically pleasing. The second thing I see is a smaller vase or goblet or pen holder, something uh, like that. But also the same issue with the rim. Finally, I see a box uh, utilising the bottom section as the bottom of the box and the piece above it turned upside down to make the lid. I don't think the final product will be uh, very pretty, but it will be an interesting technical challenge. So the first task then is to find the centres of either end and get it mounted on the lathe. Now I'm not too worried about 100% accuracy at this stage because I'm going to have to remount it after I've uh, cut it into three sections. Now from the onset I've set myself a goal of repurposing or recycling this uh, piece um, with a minimum of change to the original piece of wood. Also, with that aim in mind, I want to leave in place as many uh, of the original floors and as much of the original uh, damage as possible. To do this to such a degree, I even want to avoid sanding the outside of the box. So if I don't want to do any sanding, I've got to do some deep cleaning as this is very dusty, dirty and old. Now I have available to me a family hand down of a very old recipe for a wood cleaning material which cleans off grime, dirt, waxes and polish. The compound is a simple mechanical mix of one third boiled linseed oil, one third turpentine or white spirits and one third white vinegar. Now you can apply this cleaning mixture using a variety of techniques including a cloth, uh, a soft brush or even a toothbrush. Now a toothbrush of course will help you get in between those flutes and in the corners and in the cracks where the grime and the dirt has accumulated over the years. I've successfully used this on uh, a number of projects where I needed to clean the outside of the bowl or the object that I was renovating rather than uh, sand it back. So when you finish the cleaning process you do need to give it a wipe down with white spirit or turpentine to clean off all the residue. So it just remains now to part this off into three pieces. Now I intend to remount these pieces using a glue block so I have to make sure the ends are nice and smooth. Now I've used some 30 minute epoxy 
on the glue block to um, get this as accurately mounted as practicable. Okay, I'm going to start off the excavation of the box using a 30 millimeter force a bit to make a pilot hole all the way to the bottom. I'm going to do as much of the excavation as possible using the uh, 3 8 bowl gouge um, but eventually when I run out of space I will revert to my uh, Simon Hope 6mm mini hollowing tool. Here I'm just defining the rim of the box uh, where the lid will fit. So after sanding back to 400, I'm going to use some intrinsic colour, uh, burnt orange as the base colour, uh, as a first stage to try and match the colour of the outside. Now the burnt orange on its own was too deep and too red uh, so I decided to try and tone it down using some intrinsic colour, honey. Okay, a quick pause on this hot day. It's 37 degrees in my workshop. Um, first of all a correction. I did rather strangely say at the beginning of this video that I believe this piece of wood was um, English walnut that have been coloured to make it look like mahogany. Well, as you can see, it is in fact mahogany. Now, I've no idea why I really said that. Hang on, I can tell you. Thank you. Too much of this. Anyway, to move on, uh, the colour match using the two colours, uh, burnt orange and uh, honey over the top has worked extremely well and I'm now going to sand this back a little bit. I'm going to add some sanding sealer then some black embellishing wax to try and make it look more like the outside. So having completed that process uh, it's now time to part it off and uh, to turn my attention to the lid. So I'm going to mount the lid on the glue box in exactly the same way and once I've got it as centred up uh, as accurately as I possibly can I'm going to leave it overnight to cure. Having let the epoxy resin cure overnight I just now need to hollow the inside of the lid. I'll do most of this with my uh, 3 8 bowl gouge, but I'll finish it off with a one inch scraper. From here on, it's the same finishing regime using the intrinsic colours honey and burnt orange. Now the colour match is not too bad at all, although the outside of the piece is quite damaged due to wear and tear over the years, um, but that naturally wouldn't occur on the inside of the box. So moving on to the outside of the lid, I now have it mounted in my button jaws and I'm just going to finish the top here in a dome that uh, follows the contour of the existing uh, shape of the lid. Now I finished off the top of the lid in exactly the same way as I finished the other two parts uh, except that off camera I've given the dome a uh, good bashing around with a Jacobs chuck key in an attempt to make the wear, wear and tear uh, look the same. So finally a couple of coats of Hampshire Sheen high gloss on all of the pieces just to give it again a, a consistent finish. Okay, there we 
have it then, the repurposed or upcycled box. As I said right at the beginning of the video, this was going to be no object of beauty. And I didn't disappoint you, did I? It's pretty ugly. Um, it was really to test the principle of taking something like a table leg and turning it into something else. Uh, I think if I'd have uh, been doing this for real, as it were, I would have turned all the um, outside of the um, existing pattern away and turned something else from it. Uh, and I've got uh, some more of these legs, um, not from the same table, but I've got at least four different ones, um, which I'll have a go at a bit later. Now, the biggest problem I had with this was mounting it on the lathe so uh, it didn't uh, wobble about, so it was perfectly true. But um, I didn't test till afterwards, actually, and discover that actually it's not completely round. That didn't help. I resorted to glue blocks, as you saw, um, to do this, and it wasn't a bad method of doing it, but I'm sure there's an engineer out there who can uh, tell me a better way of doing that. The use of the uh, intrinsic colours to try and get a match worked out quite well and I'm sure if I'd have spent a little bit more time I could have um, perfected the match a little better. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this and it's inspired you to repurpose or upcycle some odd bits of wood you have lying around. But please make something prettier than this. Anyway, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again next week.